Time to tag you. I'm going to tag you. Time to tag you. It's time to tag you. Another episode of Tag Time. Welcome to Manju's house. As you can see, it's full of tradition, full of Indian culture, and it shows that how nicely he is working towards his um, ideals along with his inheritance. So, Manju, what would you like to say about all this woodwork and all these beautiful things? It's better to be more authentic. Okay, I'm an authentic person, and I wish to be that. The more authentic you are, the more. The universe offers you the best thing in your life. You have to be in yourself wherever Absolutely. you are in yes. the world. And also I like to be in the moment, live in the moment. So enjoy whatever it is. You just came, I just showed up. What yeah, a beautiful that's moment now. Nice. That's nice. As you can see, this is very traditional swing of Southeast Asia, especially Indian heritage. If we see that we are very much uh, embedded into that kind of culture and as I see on the peacock, peacock is one of the, it's it's in the wall, it's uh, it's mounted on the wall so it's a very authentic um, heritage of uh, the birds we have in India and peacock stands in a lot of things we have like from clothing to our cultural expression to our masterpiece everywhere so how would you like to say that how simply you have decorated the house how it expresses yourself see this house is built by me this is a custom home built and this house describes about me i'm an open-minded person i'm not judgmental and i take the life as it comes okay and always i take all the negative things into a positive ways and this is my life okay so you have kept it very simple but authentically very uh, embedded with your heritage yes. all the furnishing the concept of the decoration shows that so much indianness in you which is showing through your decorative uh, taste you can say one time uh, i mean you can say that in one way but now with time and the way we grow we it's supposed to be becoming a more open minded not to be branded as an indian or an asian or anything else we are all like a universal as a one yes. man yes. yes we are all one together yes yes so let's have a tour around his house and see because if you will go as as you will go around you will see that how interestingly he has done some things which we which is very authentically traditional way of doing for example i would say the exercises he does the yoga his passion for climbing the things they're so traditional and so authentically from old to new and he is very much involved in all that so let's talk about this room this should be a very happening room because apparently it looks like the when you want to relax yourself you get together here and have some fun so see now this started okay last couple of months ago i started to started learning poker mm -hmm. i want to be a professional poker player in next two years oh, i'm putting wow. a lot of time and energy and reading and watching videos to wow. be there and so far i'm at least a little close to that oh. point of view yeah okay. mm -hmm. so you're reaching to the point so this is very interesting thing about you that you never stop at one point you always multitasking or exploring something different yeah see something learning see poker is a very close to life lesson okay it's very close to life it's not only how you deal it's not only poker some people think about gambling but if you think about as a match and probabilities and you will grow in your mind in your life in a very fantastic way so I can see a lot of um, like the store as if the paintings are done on the wood and the crafts and everything from chair to everything. So what was like, why are you into these kind of heritage things? See, these are all handmade uh, handicrafts from India. And while growing up, I had a passion of whether I can afford this, whether these are very expensive parts in India. Even in India, rich people cannot afford. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, when I started making money, 
I went back to my roots and I said, oh, this is the thing that I need to get back into my house. This also feels like you're homely, you're, you don't miss anything mm -hmm. and you're living a lavish lifestyle. Yeah, it's a very, handicraft has always been a very strong point mm -hmm. of introduction to the world from that part. That's right. Especially if we see from India, the kind of handicraft we produce. Um, I think it's very diverse and it's very beautiful Absolutely. because we have a lot of uh, workers available as compared to if we see the cost uh, somewhere else. And the other thing is also all those narrations are actually explaining a story yeah. by itself. See, for example, even yes. here when you see, these are all different kinds of wood engraved. This is a different piece of wood, this is a different piece of wood, this is a different piece of wood. Oh, okay, so okay. all this is not a painting, it's like an you know, engraved. Okay, okay. So it's 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 actually the craft which is very very ancient yes. and is carried still by India only, I think, because Indians are doing tremendous thing in engravement and all those things because it comes from the sculptures and the story religious stories and goes on and on. So this is also beautiful. If we look at this kind of a thing, we can tell that this explains also a very nice in this whole thing, a very nice kind of expression. So this is, how would you explain it to me? This Indian tradition, the, how the people in India lived in the past and this still continues the same. These are all ancient work which cultivated but it's dying down, the art is dying down but still there is here and there is happening. It's still carried by yeah, there. Yeah. But the thing is because of the machines mm -hmm. and so much of uh, time um, authenticity people are actually not trying like it's as you said that it is yeah, because, is, because the artisans are not having enough money to survive because of the machines and other things but there are here and there and i try to encourage all those people yes yes this is for the encouragement of the artist see this table is also telling a story i remember when i went to um um jaipur mm. so the concept which i love was the mix of tradition with modernism so this i would say is explanation of the tradition okay. in each and every every yes. bit of it I so this is actually from my place mysore this is called a dasara this is the palace and this tradition is still happening there mm -hmm. and this is a march fast in the dasara period and this continues for seven ten days and it's one of the important occasions of India. so once you told me about this also that mesur is the hub for handicraft like doing the uh, increment in the wood so do you think that in this time period still this industry has some potential it's struggling but we never know because the in india the i mean the ancient uh, it is to be i uh, transformed from the parents to son to son to grandson but now this new generation is not interested in learning they want to go to college and university and when you go to the university or college your creativity dies rather than increasing whereas the creativity and the artistic is there in their own family mm -hmm. they don't feel that value yeah so you think that with the modernization actually the authenticity of our culture is dying i i don't know about that part but again we can see that the culture is evolving that's a better way to say it. yes, yes. That, that's that's very I, I really like that that it is actually evolving and it's becoming more and more less uh, workers available and less pieces available but uh, it's nice it really it when you want to say something authentically India you just have a look at it and you can just tell this is India you know see, again, so is, I mean when they say about Indians they don't know India itself is a universe it has been all kinds of religion, all kinds of culture, all kinds of food. India has official 165 languages. Mm -hmm. So it is itself is a own universe. And if somebody goes to Jaipur or somebody goes to Delhi, they think in, they have seen India. No. So this is the place where the magic comes. So how would you like to talk about this? See, I think uh, the real magic happens outside of this house. And this is where the paperwork happens. Okay. okay, so money making mm -hmm. is an art and it's um, like there are so many different kind of ideologies and I would say the rumors about that. So when you do work, do you do it for money or you do it for passion? That's a very good question. I'm glad that you brought it up. See, when I started in the beginning, money was driving force. 
mm-hmm. and I thought of I went after money mm-hmm. and last in the last decade I was always thinking in my mind because every religion and everybody says going for money is not money is evil I was thinking how do I stop thinking of making money mm-hmm. the more I stopped thinking of making money I was focusing on making more money mm-hmm. but then at one point I started changing my life rather than thinking of money I started enjoying my life I started celebrating my life once I started celebrating of my life my intention of making money was less but when I start celebrating it happened such a way that I started making more money into my life because you are enjoying you are celebrating you are living in the moment so now I think my celebration is more important than making money mm-hmm. but money is secondary is by products keep coming though yeah so the good thing about celebrating the life is that you start exploring the different ideas that's i right. think that's why you're having so multi-dimensional money making ideas and working towards that how would you like to comment on that okay see i think i if you, i never knew 20 years ago when i came to this country with nothing i would be having this lavish lifestyle but this thing one thing lead to the other thing and as you are as you don't resist for what nature is offering you mm-hmm. and when you go with the nature i think things will unfold by itself it's not that our goal or our dreams i never dreamt about this much i never dreamt about making this kind of money but it just happened that way mm-hmm. and i thank all my clients and friends and my own uh, decision making capacities to be reaching this life so the very good thing about you is that you're adventurous and you like to do the adventure as we see that you have a new project of your poker and you of course it's going to be ending up into another kind of business so exploring and experiencing life actually makes you more um opportun- towards more opportunities and more exploration and finding out better things for you. that's also true and also see for some people even if there is a window or door of opportunity they cannot see me i can see an opportunity in a thin line so i can grab that faster see i never knew i can be a poker player but now i started off and my journey towards being a professional poker player is very interesting very fascinating that makes me alive to excite to every day wake up and to see what is next yeah to see what is next is that you should have that adventurous quality in you to go and explore different fields so it's been really nice talking to you today I, I, and it was pleasure to see your house your working place and your so much love for india thank you so much and it was my pleasure to be with you i think the pleasure of being in this is mine so as we can see it's very green very beautiful very different so we had a tour of manju's house now it's time to go back to the studio with him It's time to tag you another episode of Tag Time. We always bring some brilliant minds and some people who are actually making a difference not in their lives but the life of the people around them. We have so many different type of people who are contributing immensely into our system. Today I have one of the very bright businessmen around us who is a person who is doing things out of passion but very contradictory and very very different ways of doing those very contrast things i have with me manju nath kupa who is a very bright businessman and a world tourist also at the same time i welcome you to my show it's my pleasure to be here So Manju let's start with your passion of having the world travel by backpack and being a very iconic businessman while living in Canada how would you explain this contrast in you See I think uh, see being a businessman is my outside perspective to build my wealth and uh, being a traveler being a backpacker is what you can be happy we can cherish and you can explore the world and this is the experience which is making me life living worthwhile so how do you see business like it's a, it's a conti- some people say it's a continuous journey some people say like um, it's 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 in the beginning you have to put certain eff- effort and then it's the money takes the money you know so what are your understandings and learnings towards that see i think the idea what you have can bring the money into the table 
So then one step leads to the other things. So this is how my business started. I had nothing in the beginning. With time, I started some idea and started working on it. And it became a passion. When you see the money, then it gives you motivation to work more. And that's how my business started from nowhere. And I started creating wealth. And wealth made me achieve something in our life. And that is my part of the business aspect of my life. So what do you think? Uh, can money making be a passion? or? It's uh, just a journey which every individual need to do. Money making can be a passion, but for me, I think building wealth was a passion. And, uh, and also money is a tool, because money you can make and you lose. Whereas once you build the wealth, it keeps on staying and it, it multiplies by itself, because the other factors influences, the marketing factors, the market. And uh, this is where I am. So do you think money is necessary for the happiness in life, or happiness itself is very difficult to attain? That's a great question. I think uh, money may not bring you the happiness. At least it will help you to create, I mean, to it will help you to dissolve so many unhappinesses which you cause without money. So what I mean to say is with money being happy is also difficult. Without money is also more difficult. With money, the happiness is much easily achieved. So we see in your personality a person who is a business icon, very business, big business holder, and very business-minded person. And on the other hand, you like to travel a lot around the world, and you just pack, pack, and go with the common people. So how do you see this contrast of life? For you, what it meant? So again, see, Initially, making money or making building wealth was one part of the time. And then when we go through the process, at one point of my life, when I went through the separation and divorce, I was in the dark side of my life. At that time, I started traveling, exploring. And that time, when I started traveling and exploring, I've been in the strange people houses, backpacking, and going in a hitchhiking with different people, with I don't even know. Then I figured I'm staying in even railway stations or somewhere else. And that time I realized you can be happy with money or you can be happy without money. It is a state of mind. It is a skill you build. And the skill is is like a compound interest. It builds on itself. Once you start building it, it becomes easier to be happier. So what what did you break? How do you actually calm down yourself? How do you relax? What do you think that isn't business very tiring? So what pacifies you? What makes you understand that how you relax yourself? See, I think relaxing is also a kind of a, you can say it's a mindset. And you can be stressful for everything or for nothing you can be stressful. But there are good stress you can take in life. There are bad stress. I'd rather take a good stress to build something and to create something. There are some bad stress while during in my marriage, I had in a bad stress. Mm -hmm. So which is not was uh, enjoyable. So when I came out of that mess, then I felt for a few minutes, for a few days, few months in a dark. But when you come out of this, then I thought now it's a liberation of your life. So I was coming to the point that uh, everything which comes to our life brings something good or something bad, both with the, because we are living in a a contradictory world. So what do you think that when money, wealth comes, money comes, uh, what challenges it brings and how do you see them? See, again, with money there is challenges, without money there is challenges. I think with money handling the challenges is much better than without money handling the challenges. So you don't see that there are challenges specifically because of wealth? That's you don't so see that? Because uh, this is one type of thinking also that uh, money itself is a kind of energy which brings different kind of uh, expressions with that, which are just because of that. It's not when you don't have that, you don't have that. See, see, when I used to drive expensive cars, you attract both peoples. Some people who are attracted to cars, and at the same time you attract the cops who will be stopping you, pulled over for no reasons to give you a ticket. So it is both ways, but sometimes you have to be calm, sometimes you have to act. As long as you are aware and awake, things will work in our favor. So what is success? See, success, I can give the quote of the Napoleon, which uh, Nightingale, which I believe in that. Success is a progressive realization of a worthwhile cause or a goal. And I believe in that. And it's not like a one time, like a winning a lottery ticket. It's an ongoing process, continuous process. So continuity is basically success, you feel. Mm -hmm. So what is goal? OK, see, initially in the past, I used to have a goal. 
to achieve something and it was never ending say let's say if you want to make x amount of dollars you achieve it next is next amount so it was not never ending so now i don't believe in goals i just go with the flow just live in the moment and once i start not chasing the money i started making more money but you go up and down with money okay there is life very very up there is life you will be very down so what is stress what is stress honestly i don't even remember what is stress at this point of time i'm very happy very content i can't even express because if you had asked me the same question 10 years ago maybe i would have expressed what is stress now i'm very happy peace joyful fun so if you are content then what is motivation in life motivation is can be different see now I, my motivation is not to uh, chase money my motivation is to enjoy life celebrate my life to be peaceful with life that's my motivation so how do you make yourself meaningful how do you yourself see if, for example if you can see once when you had nothing i'd been in that situation when i had nothing and now i have something to hold on to it and maybe if i never have the experience of riding in a nice cars or building in a living in a mansion maybe i would not have been happy because i was missing something but now i have both concluded now whether i live in a mansion or i live in a backpacking life i'm happy and content see for example i can say even buddha was a prince one time and he leave everything to go to the woods to meditate if you had not seen his kingdom maybe you would not have been happy with the woods so he chose his path and now he was he was more a liberated person and is more a happy person and we still follow buddhism uh, buddha's teachings and preachings and i believe in that too so when we call life as an experience so how would you comment on that see life is uh, creating memories you and we are creating memories together it's a moment i live in that moment and it's a beautiful thing so when you travel uh what are your expectations and how much you're satisfied with that so honestly with time i don't have expectations at all because expectations always bring disappointments so with time now i just go with the flow i just enjoy that moment whether i'm with you whether i'm with somebody else whether it's a rich person whether it's a poor people whether it's a uh, beggar i enjoy the conversation So when we see that the life is getting so difficult and people are having so much crisis especially financial crisis during the covid time and businesses big businesses are just you know blown away so how are you keeping yourself so engaged and so happy even with all those challenges see again when you say challenges it's also a mindset you know for example i used to have a fear of heights and when i started doing bungee jumping sky diving i can't quote that fear now i don't have that fear so when you now the fear becomes your friend this is how you grow so you think that challenges actually make you grow in your field every aspect of it for sure i mean because if there is no challenges there is i mean i don't say this these are the challenges is a time constraint with time everything will be solved and you need to work on it and you just skill you develop with time with age so if we see that whenever somebody concludes um, uh, uh, when they are very successful and they have achieved certain level of uh, the achievements which they want to have in life they say that they had a lot of failures behind that so how would you like to comment about that i think i've been failed couple of times in life i've gone ups and downs and whenever you grow whenever you a decision was good you grow but whenever you fail you grow longer you you grow more because the failure makes you more stronger or like it's like anti fragile i rather be anti fragile than be fragile for example there i rather be stupid idiot and anti fragile in my health my life than be fragile with richness and uh, money and wealth so if you look back at yourself what would you comment if i look back i enjoy my journey i love my life i am celebrating my life i don't think that i will change anything other than my marriage so let's talk about your life so your personal life what would you like to share with us so what personal life you want to understand let's see your journey okay. how would you explain your journey that from manjukupa mm-hmm. at the age 
uh, when he was striving for the dreams to the Manju Koopa who is so successful and is one of the most known businessmen, how would you comment? See, there are so many life-changing experiences happen in my life. So I can, I can tell you, the last one I can tell you during the COVID in the last year, something triggered up because I always had a, the fear of cold. I used to wear three layers from the month of September till May. But I thought, how do I overcome this cold? That was always my fear. So that is the reason I used to backpack in the winter. But this time, because of the COVID, I could not able to travel. I started watching something. Then I started doing one thing which is called cold shower. And in the beginning, it was so hard to take a cold shower. And now I don't even know how the warm shower looks for me. And I can't quote the cold is also meant set. And now even normal cold shower is not ha helping me anything to grow. Because when you take cold showers, it will stimulate your life. It will give a shock for your neurological treatment. And it will be, you feel you're conquering your mind. You're screwing your mind so that you can control your mind. So it's all about it, taking risks in your life, yeah, whether it's changing. business or whatever it is. Yes, same thing in life. So okay. I rather, I can tell all my audience, like cold shower is one of the things will change my life in the last one and a half years. So what are your goals now how do you see life or see, you are free from them see as of now i don't believe in goals i just want to live my life in the moment and anything because when you have a goal you are limiting yourself when you don't have a goal maybe you achieve more than that so those who are new in here mm. and are having a lot of dreams of doing things what would you say to them how would you talk to them so one of the thing is, if you have a passion to do something, you need to have a skin in the game. Whatever you have, you need to invest in that. And then if only you can make it work, there might be other influences will always will bring you down. But your energy, your focus can make any things to work. Or it's you who can make it break. So what do you think that what people usually say that passion is something different and your profession is something different? So passion, if you're lucky and is your profession, that is luck. How would you comment on that? See, again, uh, I don't believe in luck. If you work hard, luck comes to you. So you believe in hard working, not in luck? No, I mean, not only hard working, maybe working with your mind is much better than even hard work. Because if hard work makes everybody rich, every agriculturist would have been much richer person now. So it's mind and smart work all put together in a puzzle makes you a man more wealthier or happier. So contemporary world, is business world, do you think, or is it more intellectual world? I think both. So if you have to pick and choose one of them, what would you pick? See, because now, because I have enough of, for me to survive, so now intellectual world will make you, because now I read so many books and things and talking to important people, I enjoy that part. So now at this point of time, I believe in intellectual world. So I think that um, education is not only books education. Education is learning. And without learning, you cannot do business either. So actually, when you're a successful businessman, you have learned the business techniques. So that means you have already used the intellect for that That's what right. would you say see because see i don't believe in the formal education system and because whatever i studied i never used in my life see they taught me so much trigonometry calculus sine theta plus cos theta is equal to x theta i never used in my life i rather use the basic maths and whatever i learned is self-taught or the streets taught me the people around me taught me so i believe in that education and also i believe in travel travel taught me a lot travel mm -hmm. exposed me a lot then it Travel made me more happier. Okay, education did not make it. And being in business, somehow I got into that process, I don't know how, from one step leads to the other step. And here we are now. So you believe in that with fully aware mind, we should do the choices in life? Yeah, you are what you are based on the decisions you made in the past. So how much decision making is influenced by the surroundings? See, I can tell you based on my experience, see so many business decisions I made 
by thinking, analyzing and everything. And in that process, maybe in a scale of, I mean, if I made 10 decisions, maybe I'm six right, seven, six or seven right and 30 percent I'm wrong. But whenever I made a decision with a gut feeling, with my feelings, I've never been wrong. So sometimes it's a feeling is more important than the analysis or what you talk. So how would you conclude that what what are the key ingredients for a successful business entrepreneur? Honestly, I asked this question many times. I honestly I don't know, but some of they say I have it. So my friends can answer this question better than me because they have seen my qualities. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But what works for you? I mean, there are certain rules which always work for a good business deal. Mm. And there are certain rules which always drain your good deals. Mm. So how would you say that? See, that is one thing I see being honesty and keeping your word and deliver what you promise. That is a long way to grow. That is one thing I have it in me and that is what uh, that is my richness so do you think any shortcut to squeeze the time and abruptly do something i don't believe in shortcut my all journey is a long journey it is okay. nothing in a shortcut so those who are looking forward for success <laughs> should know that yeah. it is a process long time process it is, it is, as i told you success is a process of a long i'm like a, what i said is success is not one time it is a repetitive ongoing t process on and on and on. So it is said that always there is a woman behind a successful man. Mm -hmm. So how would you comment on that? See, I had a woman in my life, but I don't think that was helpful for my success. But now I have more women in my life around me. Maybe that is contributing more. I think I believe having more women around you is more successful more than having one in your life. So oh, you are man of ladies, I would say. You can say that, yeah. <laughs> okay. So any message you want to convey through us to the audience? So enjoy life, celebrate life, be happy. And it's all the state of mind. And anybody can achieve anything. If I could do something from nothing, I think everybody can achieve what they want. But it's a question of do they want, do they have the burning desire? And can they put that em effort and time and energy to grow there? So risk or taking risk, mm -hmm. being ready to uh, not hit the jackpot, mm -hmm. but to build the jackpot. Yeah, see, again, when you take the, when you say risk, most of the general people, they're not, they think they're not, only risk taking people are the one who is growing but not taking the risk is the highest risk because they are all at the end of 65 if you're working class they are poor and they need to look for a second job so they are missing the point they are not jumping to take the risk they are thinking that they're comfortable now but with longevity it will be trouble for the average person so I thank you very much for being with us today and having some discussion. Manju Kopa is very successful businessman and he has his own journey which is also about the journey of the world having backpack and traveling around as he said. He has very very sound thoughts about how you can be a peaceful person while taking the most stressful job of building the future for yourself and people around you. We will continue our talk and we will go through all that. Those who are struggling should know that these success stories are real. These are the people who make a lot of difference in their life through their very difficult journeys, which are not in front of us, but have been the point of making them reach where they are today. So don't be shy, do take chances, take risks, and find your way, your path, your path of success in the life. I thank you very much for watching my show today with Halima Sadia. Time to tag you. I'm going to tag you. Time to tag you. It's time to tag you another episode of Tag Time.